Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our long-running series, The Unported Playlist, where I take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time, and we're still doing Unported Hall of Fame, where I talk about some of the earliest videos on my channel because the games remain unported, and they are spectacular. And today we're looking at Alien 3 The Gun, because I love Sega games, I love arcade games, and I specifically love light gun games. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But when I say I absolutely love this game, I mean it. I think this is probably the best Sega ever did with their superscalar technology on the System 32. Between the pre-rendered graphics in spots and all of the smooth scaling, this just looks absolutely outstanding. Now I will say that I am not the biggest fan of the Alien movies, I think they're good, but I am not a super fan. But even with that being said, this game just has absolutely everything you would want in an arcade light gun experience. The action is fast and intense, there's things all over the screen, and it does play around interestingly enough with some of the gun mechanics as well, and I'll mention those in a little bit. But right off the top, this game just looks spectacular, especially for 1994. This was an amazing game on amazing Sega hardware, and it shows. And you will see in spots, so there are pre-rendered assets as well. Those can lights spinning around definitely looks like something that was rendered in 3D and brought over to a sprite a la Donkey Kong Country, and it just works. But again, there's just so much on the screen at once, and when all of those sprites scale towards you as enemies, they look really good. They're not hyper-pixelated, and you can 100% tell what it is that's trying to kill you at that moment in time. But I love the super face hugger here as well. The character designs obviously coming from the Aliens franchise and H.R. Geiger's artwork work so well in a 2D game. Now, there are 3D Alien light gun games as well, but for my money, Alien 3 The Gun is the height of this genre with this franchise behind it. And I will say it is quite a long game as well, but it always holds up. You never feel like you're getting bored until the very end. You feel like you played just enough, and the game magically ends right around that period in time. So the overall flow and pace of this game, again, is outstanding. And I love that that alien just decides to headbutt you right into your screen, and it gives that little crack overlay. Every once in a while, you will see enemies come very close to the corners, and that can be a little bit hard to hit. So there is a tiny bit of cheapness here, and I will 100% say, based upon the patterns in which the enemies come onto screen, this is going to be a much easier game as a two-player experience, because you need to deal with up, down, left, and right, all over the screen, all at once, and as a one-player experience, that can be a lot to cover. But you will see that there's a power meter at the bottom left, and that means that you can't just hold the trigger down and indefinitely shoot at everything. It is auto-fire until that power runs low. At the bottom third, your bullets are going to come out slower, and when it runs out, you need to release the trigger to basically reload your weapon. So it is an interesting mechanic. And sometimes with boss battles too, like this tank right here, you're going to have to shoot what's flashing on the screen. The entire tank is not the weak spot. If it's not flashing, that means you cannot do damage. And it does add a little bit of layer of complexity to this game, but it 100% works and gives you just enough challenge to feel like the game is asking something of you without being so hard and difficult that you feel like it's being cheap and not allowing you to do that damage in game. But again, graphically, it's just a spectacular experience as that fog lifts and the sunrise comes up over this planet with what looks like two different suns. It is just such an artistically, aesthetically pleasing game. All of the sprites are so well animated. The horror elements are there. As those aliens are crawling towards you and jumping at the screen, you can tell that the artist put in so much detail into this game that there's always something to see. And you will see there was a continue there. It is not an easy game. It's not a cheap game, but it's definitely going to keep you on your toes, and you're going to need to learn how to manage that screen space to succeed. And speaking of screen space, the game's definitely going to give you some interesting looks like this infrared overlay, and I will say that just when you're done seeing one environment, the game is smart and changes it up to give you something entirely new to look at, so it gives you a really good tour through this entire experience. It's not looking at one thing too often, and I will say this game also has an absolutely spectacular soundtrack that 100% fits the alien vibe so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds or so and i'll come back and talk more about the history of the game and the system 32 hardware but enjoy
soundtrack just 100% works for the game, even if unfortunately some of it's lost underneath those gunshot sound effects, but that's pretty much every Lycan game in existence, and we really can't critique Sega for that. But as we move on again, just look at how smooth this scaling is. I absolutely love how this game functions graphically. Obviously, you don't get as much detail on the ceiling and the floor, and that's just a System 32 limitation. But all of the walls, all of the doors, everything kind of looks like a first-person shooter. This is similar in appearance to Wolfenstein, and I do love that you actually get some different routes in parts of the game with this elevator here. It gives you just enough time to breathe before you move on. But again, the System 32 was such an impressive piece of hardware, and it 100% shows here how you turn those corners. Everything works. The graphical illusion never breaks down, and this is about as close to 3D as you can get in 2D from a Sega game. I think this does a much better job than something like Outrunners of showing that full pseudo 3D effect. And I love in the prison stage here as well, you just get all of these hanging carcasses as aliens burst out of them and come at you. It is such a vibe, and I love that this game's constantly changing up what it's showing you. We just came inside from a long outside planetary section, and now we're in much more close quarters combat, having to deal with all of these aliens just flying at the screen at the same time. It works, and I love that they vary up what they show you. It keeps the game feeling fresh and new, and it makes you want to see what comes next. And Sega was always great at that with their arcade games, changing up the graphical style stylings to let you know that something cool is coming around the corner and maybe you want to throw some more quarters into the machine to see what's next. It's a very good design decision. I will say that there's definitely some strategy involved in the game. Like you'll see here, I have four bombs, and if I save them up for the boss fight, it basically becomes free. But I love that when you do shoot those bombs off, even the lamps on the ceiling are affected by that bomb burst. It's such a tiny detail, but it works so well, and it tells you that the artists and developers at Sega were 100% thinking how they could fill the screen with detail to make this feel like a living, breathing game. And I think that's my favorite part about this game, because like I said earlier, I'm not a mega fan of the Alien franchise. I think they're excellent movies, but if you want to talk about one of the best horror movies of all time that involves aliens in an obscure place, I'm going to 100% go to The Thing versus Alien. But leave me a comment down below and tell me, Alien versus The Thing, what do you think? And don't forget, the only right answer is The Thing. But again, just going through this prison section with all of this scaling, this is where the game gets really intense. It's going to throw so many aliens at you at once. You're going to be dealing with face huggers on the floor and ceiling. You're going to have aliens coming down the middle of the corridor. You need to 100% manage every single pixel of the screen to make sure you're shooting where you need to and protecting yourself. And that's why I say this is definitely an easier game with two players. One player takes to the left, one player takes to the right, and you can basically just focus on half of the screen. But as a one player experience, it is still an absolute ton of fun. It is just going to be a harder game to deal with. And we finally get a boss battle against the alien proper here. And it just looks so good. H.R. Geiger's art translates so well into pixel art. I think more so than 3D polygons outside of something like Alien Isolation. This is just a pretty game and it uses so many interesting colors. This warm red from the lava glow that you'll see underneath us shortly. This looks and feels like the Alien movies, and that's one of the biggest compliments I can give the game. It does not feel like Konami's Alien, a fun game, but it has nothing to do with the movie visually. Sega took all of the art, all of the design, everything that made the Alien movies great, and put it into a game to make it work. But I will say as you get a little bit further into the game towards the end, it becomes extremely difficult. This is where you're going to burn off a lot of credits. But I want to give you one more taste of the soundtrack because it is so good. So enjoy it for like 30 seconds this time and I'll come back and close out the video. But enjoy! Just another awesome piece of soundtrack right there, but as we get into the final boss battle, what the game wants you to think is the final boss battle, I love that Sega pivots it thematically because the alien's life bar does not go down. You need to push the alien towards that pit by canceling its attacks. 
And had I saved up some bombs when I got here, it would be much easier, but I didn't do the strategy correct because I'd used them in the previous area. But as you move the alien back, you're going to see what happens. And I do love that Sega just played around with the final boss battle. It 100% works, and as that sprite comes towards the screen, it just looks incredible. It's barely pixelated when it's in your face, and it looks even better when it goes backwards. But now that we push that alien towards that steam vent, it's going to get 100% flooded with this boiling water. But of course, it's an alien game, and there's always going to be one last desperation attack, and it's going to crawl itself out of that water, and you need to shoot this device above you. And I love that when things happen in the game, it just cuts away two scenes from the movie and shows you what is going on. It's a tiny little touch, but I 100% love it. I love that the alien just dissolves from the torso up, rotting away into the ground. But of course, it is an arcade game, and there's always one final boss, and you'll see this guy come in here and give you a little bit of story. The story is not that huge in the game, but there's just enough there to make you wonder what is going on. But I will say, if you're hoping for a happy ending, the game does not have it whatsoever. And I will say that for a quote-unquote final final boss... And this is actually probably the easiest boss battle in the game. You just need to unload on this dude. He's going to move left and right, and his life bar goes down relatively quickly. So it really isn't the hardest thing in the world. I ran out of all health there, but you'll see here, even if I hadn't run out of health, it is not a hard battle. He just goes down so quickly. But it's just a ton of fun. I absolutely love Alien 3 the gun. I love the sprite scaling hardware behind it. And I love the Sega System 32. So this has got everything to be included in the Hall of Fame. It is a light gun game. It's a super scalar game. It's made by Sega. And it has never been ported to a home console. And for that reason and many, many more, it's on the Hall of Fame list. But you will see here, like I said earlier, it just isn't a happy ending. It makes you wonder what's going to happen. But I love all of these soldiers come in looking for the samples. And everything that happened here basically was erased. Short of that, 10 out of 10 game. Leave me a comment down below. Have you played it? Do you enjoy it? And do you know where there is a current arcade cabinet for it? There is one in Illinois. I know where it is. And I'll probably go play it shortly. Short of that, I'll see you guys next time. I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.